Well, we're going to do something a little bit better than that today, Jane. We're actually going to show you all um, what we did for the sort of six and a half weeks. We've got a, a range of videos that we actually took while we were travelling. We got stuck in a plane in Delhi in a sandstorm for about five hours, which you can imagine seven farmers sitting on a plane together for five hours in on the Pakistani-India border is not a whole lot of fun. But iMovie got us through it and we sort of did a crash course in how to do little mini movies. So we thought today... Each of us would introduce one of the countries and then show you a couple of minutes of our time there, which ranged from visits to farmers, processes, um, high commissions, as well as getting to indulge in some cultural experiences, which um, I think any time you go to a country, to be able to meet the people um, who rely on that country to live gives you a much deeper and broader understanding of, of the country and the dynamics. Oop. So introducing the group, we had CC from Brazil, GMO adoption, myself, a salmon farmer from Tassie, Dan Steele, who couldn't be with us here today, and as an apology, he's a uh, conservation farmer from New Zealand, Fiona Hall, apples and cherries, Nathan, uh, organic horticulture, Victoria, got Matt, cotton grower, Queensland, James Terry, asparagus in Australia, Victoria. So here's where we travel to around the world. And we started in our nation's capital, Canberra, and I think as Tim Hunt from Rabobank said yesterday, it's really good sometimes to look forward before you move, sorry, look backwards before you move forward. And we visited the, the National Gallery, the War Museum, War Memorial, sorry, um, as well as spending some time at Parliament House and hearing from various trade um, policy makers, which um, laid the foundation really well to then head off to Singapore. So we arrived to Singapore, it was hot and humid, so a bit of a change for all of us from the cold. It was, I think, minus three when we left Canberra and it was 30 degrees and almost 100% humidity when we arrived in Singapore. Singapore, we met with Monsanto, Syngenta, ANZ and a private equity firm and it was really interesting for us all to gather information about how Singapore and the financial hub that it is for the Asian region and the Asia Pacific. Yes, yeah, so there's just a few photos. We also visited a vertical garden. It's, it's called Sky Greens. They're growing produce seven metres in the air. Over 95% of Singapore's food is imported, so it was interesting to see food that's actually been grown there. The next stop was India. India is the country they say that you can't wait to leave, but also the country you can't wait to get back to. We've got a uh, just a short video, sorry, of, uh, of India. India, uh, in India, we travelled across the south of India and then up to the Punjab region in the north. We also spent time in the capital of New Delhi and this is where we met with the Australian High Commission. The biggest challenges for farmers we witnessed in India was the route to market with road infrastructure making it almost impossible for farmers and traders and without adequate coal stor chain storage. It was easy to see why the majority of food that is glo wasted globally is he wasted here in this country. We even saw firsthand a producer using insecticide spray on his fruit to extend the shelf life, which highlights the obvious issue for India, food safety. So our next stop was Doha, Qatar. And, and it was an incredible contest, contract for our group to travel from India. 
where we heard that they're living on less than one dollar per day. To travel to Qatar who bring one billion US dollars every three days from oil reserves. So Qatar has the highest GDP in the world, but as saying goes, money can buy anything, everything. So in their case, that means that green pastures and steady rainfall to grow their own food. So they import a whopping 98% of their food, and food security becomes the biggest issue to their population. Just an overview also from our trip to Qatar. How, take the scarf off. How hot is it here in the, uh, the Qatari desert? What are we talking about, about 46? I was thinking 60 in the shade. <laughs> So our next stop was Turkey. We flew overnight from Doha to uh, Istanbul, and then our first morning we met uh, Louis Chernside, our guide and host for our time in Turkey. The first day we visited Gallipoli, um, which was a great experience for us all to see. And then we 
travelled and spent three nights, I think, in Bursa, and we visited there. It's a large tomato producing area of the world. So visit tomato growers and processors, and as well as the wholesale market in Bursa. We then travelled around uh, up to Istanbul, where we had a meeting with the High Com Australian High Commission and several other meetings there as well. So another short video. stop was France. We'd already been to France for our CSE conference, but we'd returned back to uh, the part of France called Bretagne, where we met up with some Nuffield scholars, uh, Guillaume, Baptiste, and our main host in France was Olivier. We travelled around and looked at sites specific to their part of France, which were dairying, some seafood, and uh, production of potatoes and other seed crops. It was a contentious part of France where we were looking after, uh, they were against the production of GMO type crops, so we had to reserve ourselves a little bit when we went into people's houses for meetings. But other than that, we really enjoyed this part of France. And we'll give it a short video to 
show our appreciation. So this is our, our last stop and on to the USA. As much as we loved all of the other countries, we were, or I was, very excited to be getting to the USA. I personally couldn't wait to find some beef, chicken, french fries and beers. <laughs> as great as the other countries were, the boiled eggs, the boiled egg curries, the snails just weren't doing it for me, apart from losing weight. But um, with James Terry, our personal trainer, these burgers and beers were only a dream, and the Nuffield adventure carried on. Washington DC was a fantastic place, and uh, we got a good grasp of agriculture in the USA, and even on a world scale. And we were able to visit embassies from around the world and meet up with our fellow GFP groups. So Wyoming was our next stop, and how excited we were to be putting, putting on our 10-gallon hats. Nathan was our cowboy for the trip, and he looked right at home in this state. Wyoming was a great experience for us all, and we were able to visit many enterprises that were much different to our own. However, we gained a lot of knowledge and ideas from these visits, as it was outside the box for most of us. We began the journey from Denver, Colorado, and picked up our fuel-guzzling, slow and heavy big old Ford van, and headed off for the hills for Laramie. Here we met our host, uh, Ken Hamilton. Ken and his wife, Kathy, took the girls into their home for two nights, and were except, exceptional in welcoming us to their state. Wyoming was a fantastic journey and a great GFP visit and provided much variety and many different operations, land types as well as conservation, cropping and livestock. Wyoming was all about university research and ag, GM sugar beets, financial viability, GM sustainability, corn, loose and wheat, cattle and the work of the Wyoming Farm Bureau. We also learned about wild game and fishing problems, met the governor of Wyoming, visited beef feedlots, irrigation and hay operations. And from this whirlwind journey and many great visits to finish off the GFP, it was now the final leg and we drove off into the Wyoming sunset where we were bound for Denver, Colorado. In Denver we would all say our goodbyes after a seven week long journey that no one would ever believe to experience in their lives. During this time we shared much knowledge, jokes and forged some great friendships which would, which would last a lifetime. Along the way we had learnt more than we ever imagined and it's still difficult to believe what we had seen in that small amount of time. From this experience many of us have gone on to experience new opportunities and met some great contacts and this has been a great stepping stone in our own businesses. So on behalf of the entire group um, we'd like to thank Nuffield for the experience and in particular Jim Gelch and we'd like to welcome Jodie Dean to a new position um, and she seems to be doing a great job so far. 
And we sincerely thank all of our GFP hosts and everyone that made it possible. Thank you.